Hello YouTube land. Today I'm going to show you how to use the 2D text module in OpenSCAD. To make it 3D you've just got to do a linear extrude which I've already gone over before. But I'll show you at the end of this how to do it. Uh, now to do this you will need a certain version of OpenSCAD. Um, 2015.3-1 and later. I believe is when they brought it in. Now to use it, very very simple. You just got text. You put whatever text you want. Let's be completely cliched and under death and use the words hello world. There we go. Now, the font that it brings up, I'm pretty sure it actually just uses the, la the very last font that you used before. If you haven't, it's, I can't remember what the default is. But um, yeah, it's pretty boring text, so we'll change the, the font and the, and the style of it. Um, I believe the last one I used was actually to Homer. But, um, yeah. To see a list of available fonts, you simply go to Help Font List. Windows already open, and you get this nice exhaustive list of pretty much every font that's on your system, uh, which is quite a good one, including some Chinese one. Uh, in my case, I prefer. I like to use Tama in the demo. It's also a nice. It, it's a nice font, I think. Uh, as you can see here, there's regular and bold. So for the styles, so you can have two different types, obviously. Some of them will give you italic. Like that there. But yeah, we'll go to a few to home because uh, I like it. So when you're specifying a font, um, it's really quite simple. It's just another parameter. Font equals to Homer. Uh, we want to specify a style, and you can't just do this style equals bold. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually work for some reason. Um, I don't know why they didn't do it. Uh, unfortunately, the um, these two actually have to be together and separated with uh, semicolon. You can't have that in. Yeah, you can't have that in. Yes. Yeah. Now, there we go. Now we've got a bold to homo bit of text. Um, Let's select the regular one. It's nice and simple. Go ahead and stick with bold. Yeah. Uh, the other thing you can't do in this, like you can with just about every other module, is put it in the center the traditional way with center equals true. It just doesn't work, unfortunately. Um, so we've got another parameter we can use called HAline. Uh, this allows you to do left. There's a right in there as well. There we go. Talks it over to the other side there. Um, and of course, you've also got your traditional center, which centers the uh, centers the location horizontally. Um, you've also got 
a V align. So your vertical align. So you know, usable words in there are top, center. So that will centralize your text quite comfortably. Okay. We're not going to worry about you know, taking those out just to save on screen space a bit. Um, the other useful thing when you're dealing with text in OpenSCAD with the text module is the direction. Uh, we can have it left to right, like it is now. But we can also have it right to left. Here's another funny notation that they've come up with. Yeah. So now our text is backwards. Very useful if you can pop it. Yeah, you know, if you want to make a mirror of something, like when you, if you're going to mold something or something like that, it's yeah, very useful. Um, you also got another useful one, um, top to bottom, which is pretty useful for certain things, only if you're doing a lot of signage, stuff like that. Um, this isn't just limited to the three to three D printing. I mean, you can also use this for if you're using, say, um, uh, say a, a, you know, one of those etching machines, or an engra a CNC engraver, or you're using a CNC router and you want to carve out words like this. It's, this makes it so much easier just to generate the text, um, especially if you're doing things like names and stuff like that. You can actually create. You actually create your create your uh, your two D object and stick text in it, um, and I'll show you how to do that later with a subtract. Uh, so with a difference, um, you've also got bottom to top. This is a, a fairly a, there's a few good options in there. Um, I'm not going to go through every single last one because there is a few of them. And, uh, OpenSCAD does have a pretty good manual on this stuff. Uh, now, there is another parameter called size. Now, size is um, interesting. It doesn't appear to do a lot other than the vertical height. You can see here it's uh, 10 mil, 20 mil. So that's all it seems to really do. Uh, if you want to stretch the word out, you've also got uh, spacing. Uh, by default, it's one. That doesn't really do much. But uh, it's a bit of a multiplier. So, yeah. Uh, you can do a fair bit with that. You can also go negative if you want. So you go, you don't do negative. Um, you would do something like uh, 0.9 if you want to really sort of draw the letters together. Really put them, pull them together. You really want them on top of each other. You can even do that, but no practical use for that. Um, in some cases you might want them a little bit wider if you can the machine them out. Or if you want to avoid really thin bits in between. So yeah, that's all the fun you can have with that. Now, chances are for 3D printing you're going to want to do a linear extrude. So you're going to want to want to make this 2D now because it's sorry 3D. But because it's 2D, when you render it, that's what you're going to get. 2D drawing. Uh, to turn it into 3D, all you want to do is a linear extrude. Um, give it a height. So 
in that case, 2 mil because I might put it on the sign. And, uh, there we go. So we now have 2D lettering. So 3D lettering. Um, it's a bit. It's a bit rough. So let's give it a bit more resolution. It's a bit excessive, but there we go. We now have nice smooth lettering, which is pretty good. Now, for the signage stuff, what you want to do is you want to put it into a different statement. So we want to start off with we want to start off with square because we want to take this negative. We want to actually subtract it from the square. So. Um, that's 200 by, so you know, let's, let's do a square that's say 200 uh, by 30. And there we go. So you can see there. Okay. We need to move this up a bit. And we're going to go, so let's go five along, uh, five up. There we go. Uh, so when you export that as a DXF, you could actually bring that into whatever CAM program you're using, and you can generate all the paths to, to carve, to cut that out. Um, it will give you a negative, a, a negative uh, space. So then, yeah, you, know, you cut it with machine or whatever, or whatever you're machining there. So it's not a bad way to go. Um, also good for extrude, uh, what's it called, uh, engraving and all that sort of stuff. So um, that's not bad there. Now, if you want as well. You're doing say stencils. You put a linear, you wrap the entire thing in a linear extrude. Yeah, nice good stencil there. You should give it a height parameter. You don't want your stencil 100 mil high. So make your stencil say 2 mil. There you go. Your stencil's not always going to work out though because you've still got. If you printed this, it'd turn out. You know, you get nice little islands. So, what you can do is you can go through and you connect them all up with, uh, like wrap it in a union statement and put put little cubes in there, so that when they print, they sort of come out. I mean, it's, um, something to note when printing these things is that the uh, the size of the text is uh, it does have a lower limit on how well it turns out. So. Generally, 10 millimeters as a letter height is probably about as small as you should go. Uh, if you're going to do external letters, so you want to do something, uh, something like this. You've now got text that sits up. What you've got to bear in mind, though, is that that these lines are not very thick. When it's like the, the extruder sort of jumping from one to the next, um, especially when you get to the tops of eyes, the dots, uh, those can turn out very small, and in some cases, not at all. So you end up with eyes on your on your print that just Look silly, so uh, yeah. Generally, try and aim if you're going to do this sort of thing. 
go for about 20, 30 mil. And you should be right no matter what nozzle size you've got. So, yeah, that's how you do text in OpenScab. Uh, you can rotate all this around and embed it in things. There is a way of wrapping it around objects, but I'm not going to go through that now. So, it's, yeah, it's something that's done very often. But, um, 